Click. Click on the next activity. Professor Hester investigates living and non-living things. What's that sound? Wondered Professor Hester. She turned to see a shiny robot walking into her lab. Lester was close behind. How do you like the robot I just built, Aunt Esther? Lester asked. You built this? Professor Hester said. I'm impressed. Thanks. I'm really excited. It's my first real live robot. Lester replied. Professor Hester smiled. Your robot is amazing, Lester. But you know it's not really alive, don't you? What do you mean? Asked Lester. Well, said Professor Hester. If it's really alive, there are five things it should be able to do. Let's see how many of those things your robot can do, okay? Okay, Lester replied. What's the first thing? All living things get and use energy. Can your robot do that? Asked Professor Hester. Yes, Lester answered. My robot gets energy from its batteries and it uses that energy to move. You're right, said Professor Hester, peering inside Lester's machine. Your robot does get and use energy, but not the same way that a living thing does. What's the difference? Asked Lester. Let's think about that, said Professor Hester. She looked around the room, went to the windowsill, and picked up a plant. Here's one way. This plant gets energy from the sun and then uses that energy to make food for itself. I get it, said Lester. And animals get energy from the food they eat. Exactly, said Professor Hester. Next question. Does the robot respond to things that happen around it? Professor Hester asked. I'm not sure what that means, Lester said. How about this plant? Asked Professor Hester. Does it change in any way depending on what's happening around it? Sure, Lester answered. When you water a plant with droopy leaves, after a while, its leaves perk up. Or if you turn the plant so that the leaves face away from the sun, when you come back the next day, the leaves will be facing the sun again. Very good, Professor Hester replied. So does your robot respond to things around it? Definitely, Lester replied. When my robot runs into something that's in the way, like a piece of furniture, it goes around it. Next, Professor Hester asked Lester if the robot could reproduce. What does reproduce mean? Asked Lester. It means to make more of itself, Professor Hester said with a smile. Birds lay eggs that baby birds hatch from. And mammals, such as rabbits, give birth to their babies. Then the baby birds and rabbits grow up to look like their parents. Maybe I could program my robot to make more robots, Lester said excitedly. Professor Hester smiled. If you did, then your robot would be able to do three of the things that living things can do. Let's keep going. What's next? Living things grow, answered Lester. So does my robot. If I press this button, it gets taller. I can see that, Professor Hester said. But when a living thing grows, it doesn't just get bigger. The parts inside its body grow and change, too. How do they do that? Asked Lester. Professor Hester explained. Living things are made of tiny parts called cells. Cells are so tiny that you have to use a microscope to see them. They're kind of like the toy building blocks you used to play with. And cells are living things, too, which means they can make more of themselves. That's how every part of you can grow and change. So that's how a seed grows into a plant and how a puppy grows up into a dog? Asked Lester. Exactly, said Professor Hester. Well, said Lester, my robot is definitely not made of cells. It's made of plastic and metal and wires and stuff. 
and none of those things can make more of themselves. So is it really alive? Asked Professor Hester. I guess not, Lester answered. But that doesn't mean your robot isn't awesome, said Professor Hester. May I please have a demonstration of all the amazing things it can do? Absolutely, Lester replied. He pressed a button on the remote control, and the robot began to move. It picked up a bag of kibble and poured some into Jester's bowl. Jester heard the food hitting the bowl and bounded into the lab. He looked from the robot holding the bag of food to Lester holding the bowl of food. Then he jumped on Lester and wagged his tail. Professor Hester smiled. It looks like Jester knows the difference between a living and non-living thing, she said. And he likes you best. <laughs>